imagine that you are advanced in age yet cannot read and write, especially at a time when all those around you, including your children, can exhibit such skills with ease. Will you take an offer to study under such circumstances, knowing the possible stigmatization that could come along with accepting that offer? In the town of Weja in Accra, a 63-year-old woman and other adults are taking lessons with passion and least perturbed about comments that they are too old to study. Join us is Joseph Akablay has the rest of the story. How are you? We are fine, thank you. I'm also doing well. Now, today, we are going to look at it says cool like any other. Its classroom has a blackboard, decks for students, as well as course materials. Even I tell my, my son that uh, one of my daughter that uh, I'm, I'm come to learn. And you say that you are age that uh, now we are going to say yes. When I sit, I sit to lead, uh, look after you, when you grow, Finish your school. Now, you two, I'm coming to collect chalk money for you <laughs> to come to school. It's never too late. That's the idea motivating 63 year old Sarah Esi, a mother of two who wants to be able to express herself in a quaint language. Sarah and her classmates are here each day taking lessons from basic arithmetic to English rhymes. If you calculate like uh -huh. nine, three plus nine, uh -huh. why are you not going to put all the twelve? Why are they not put all the twelve years? Yes. Yes. My good is better, and my better best. Very good, drum, drum. Drum, drum, the message afar. Learning to read and write. It's a typical classroom situation, except okay. these are adults. Uh, While they are at it, some of the children whose school facilities the adults are using are busy playing football on a compound. Their headmaster, Techi Kodam, explains why he decided to allow the use of the school. And they also need the knowledge. And the, there's the agency looking at the people, the mothers, the fathers, the brothers and sisters who are out there so ignorant of what is happening. So there was a clear call to listen to them I gave this facility over a year for free, nothing. Back in the classroom, Reverend Joseph Yamwa is focused on his students. He tells me how brilliant they are. I'm not facing problem over here at all. I, actually, I'll give the student over the 80%, I'll give these people 70%. But I'm looking at the standard and the, how they get my teachings as uh, uh, early and then quick, I'm, 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 I'm amazing. But I'm amazing. What could motivate an elderly person whose children are in school to want to be educated, especially at a time when they are far advanced in age? I just want to learn, that's, uh, to help them. There is a time I'm not feeling happy in the house. So if I come to the class, I feel happy. And I also, I send a, my, I have two kids. One is a boy and one is a girl. They are all teachers. So I tell them that <laughs> I, I want to happy myself. So, yes. But uh, earlier you said that uh, you used to attend school, but you stopped at JHS 1. Uh, why did you stop? Oh, my father was dead in my... My father and my, my mother are dead. So I just stayed with some people. Okay. Yeah, but so far, how do you find the lessons here? What are you learning? Are you impressed with what you are learning? Oh, it's fun for me. That even I tell my, my son that uh, one of my daughter that uh, I'm, I'm coming to learn. And you say that you are age that, and now we are going to say yes. When I sit, I sit to lead, uh, look after you, when you grow, finish your school. Now, you two, I'm coming to collect chalk money for you <laughs> to come to school. I'm happy because now even I can learn with my children now, so I'm happy for that. Are you able to assist them with their assignments when they bring them? Yes, even they help me too. Sometimes I help them. 
And the first time you told your husband you were coming over for this kind of class, uh, what was his reaction? Well, she was happy because my husband liked reading books and even always she fights with me that I don't like reading books. So the moment I told him, he was happy about that because always in the evening, the time he would come from work, we were reading, I was doing my homework, the children too was doing their own, so he was happy about that. Okay, uh, so I guess you can read a bit of what you have in front of you okay. first. Okay. So. Where is the, where is the bag? The bag is on the table. Where is the book? The book is on the bag. I need a pen. The pen is also inside the bag. Very, very interesting uh, one there reading uh, bits and pieces of that passage and uh, questions and answers in the book as well. Uh, like you can guess, uh, you're never too old to study and there are these individuals here are taking advantage of the opportunity being offered by Engage Now Africa to receive some education, hopefully to improve upon the understanding of the language. More importantly, not just about reading and writing, but some arithmetic, uh, which is important and an integral aspect of everyday life, uh, for which reason uh, they have decided to take part in this. Uh, reporting for Joy News from the Wager DAJHS, not the regular school, but the adult class. My name is Joseph Akable. Isn't it so easy to fall in love with the first woman? Well, she's happying herself. Why don't you happy yourself as well if you feel that you need this kind of education? Go for it. Well, on the, on the occasion of the World Literacy Day, Joseph Akable has also engaged the country director of Engage Now Africa, Cecilia Mankwa. The non-governmental organization has been championing adult education in the sub-region. When you lose the ability to read, write, or make use of arithmetic, it will be tough for you, I guess. How about those who don't have this ability and time? As part of the UN's literacy day, they decided to pay some attention to literacy, more importantly, in the digital age. And I'm here to engage Cecilia Mankwa, the country director for Engage Now Africa, to pick her thoughts on exactly what the day means for them, and more importantly, some activities that they've got lined up as part of their celebrations for this year's activity. Madam Mankwa, thank you for joining us. Welcome, thank you for having me. Uh, first, let's start off by talking about Engage Now in Africa. Uh, we, all, we know there are many other NGOs. Uh, what kind of NGO are you and what are you into? For which reason you decided uh, to take an interest in this day? Um, Engage Now Africa is a non-profit organization whose main aim is to end poverty in Africa. We are currently in five African countries, which comprises of Ethiopia, Namibia, Sierra Leone, Uganda, and Ghana. And um, we are into six main initiatives. We are doing um, education, we are into education, we are into self-support assistance, we are into medical services, we are into clean water and sanitation, we are into orphanage support and eradication of modern slavery. In terms of the specifics, so assuming you are, for instance, in Namibia, what are you doing in terms of education? Well, um, in Namibia, or in, in education, what we do most is to give um, loan, like scholarship loans for students that are brilliant but needy to be able to further their education. And also to champion the cause of adults that are illiterate or that do not have the chance to go to school, to also have the privilege to learn how to read and write in the English language. And so far, how has it been in terms of uh, the impact, uh, impact that they expect to make? Uh, because definitely, if any individual is undertaking any activity, one thing that you'll be doing is how eventful has it been? If it's not reaping much dividends, then it's not worthwhile engaging them. How has it been for you? Well, the impact we want to make is to really help the adults that are illiterate to learn how to read and write, to be able to gain their self-confidence, to be able to uh, interact with people that they deal with. Remember most of these people that we are engaging in or trading with are adults that are uh, business people, some are farmers, some are traders, some, some are businessmen, and they would love to 
really know how to engage the people that probably patronize their services so that they will be able to sell and be able to make profit and be able to do basic bookkeeping to be able to save in the bank, be able to go to the bank and say, oh, I have this money and I want to um, fill the, um, maybe the savings form to, to save my own money, sign my own signature and get something out of the bank. You know, these are, this is um, the basic things that we want people to know. We want them to be able to function in, in, in society. Should we be so much concerned about people's inability to read and write, and more particularly about the fact that uh, the focus for some time now has been on adults who cannot do that. In terms of arithmetic, I can attest to the fact that there are many who have not gone to school, but they seem to have a good understanding yeah. of arithmetic. Uh, how serious is this something that uh, we as a country, uh, as a whole, we should be interested in? I think this is very serious. As a country, we need to really move this uh, outdoor data illiterate along. Because looking at the illiteracy rates that we currently have, you might think it's low, but it will surprise you that most of these people that they even call themselves literate are struggling with um, communic communication or, I mean, we be able to trade or be able to have this interaction, human interaction or relationship with others. And you can just imagine if somebody that have the basic is struggling, how much more somebody that has never had that opportunity. So we should, we should be able to help these people come out this um, poverty or this stage. We noticed that most of the initiatives that I mentioned from the beginning that we take to these communities, we have most of these people that are very vulnerable because we work with the deprived communities. And they, they, they really like what you bring to them, but probably the maintenance of taking care of what you have given them is always a problem. Then we also notice that because they themselves have not been to school or stopped along the, the way, they are not encouraging their young ones, their children, to take their education very seriously. I would suggest or I recommend that Governments work with NGOs that are championing this cause, that together we can help to eliminate um, illiteracy out of the system. We should come together to collaborate so that we can reach to every community that is suffering from this um, problem, which is illiteracy, to be able to come out of it and, and, re and be able to get everybody along. Joseph Akable with that interview there. And of course, literacy is a big deal if we want our country to develop. So government has stepped in. Well, it says it is introducing a project to equip adult learners with ICT skills. The Information Technology and Digital Literacy Project will help recognize the potential of adult learners and improve the non-formal education subsector. This was revealed by the Deputy Minister for Education, Barbara AC, at an event to mark International Literacy Day here in Accra. I am pleased to announce that the non-formal education division of my ministry is currently designing an information technology and digital literacy program aimed at equipping adult learners with ICT skills as part of an accelerated literacy plan for all target groups. I thought we were going to applaud. So that we are excited about it. The ministry is also ready to support this noble venture aimed at bridging the gap between the educated and vulnerable in society. So as a ministry, we are doing everything possible to bridge the gap between the educated, that is people who have education, and people who are vulnerable in our society. The government recognizes the immense potential of the non-formal education subsector in creating job opportunities for unemployed youth and adult non-literates in the country. And we all do everything possible within our power to ensure that adequate, adequate resources are provided to facilitate full-scale implementation. Acting Director of the Non-Formal Education Division, Mr. Francis Asumedu, has also emphasized the impact of non-formal education on its beneficiaries. He, however, says that more work needs to be done to chalk more successes. There are piles of evidence that the NFLP 
has impacted positively in the, in the lives of the beneficiaries and the target communities. Learners' mastery of the three arts, namely reading, writing, and arithmetic, which we usually call numeracy, has opened up scores opportunities for them in their communities. Record keeping of learners has improved, and traders have better appreciation of business practices. There is also a greater reduction in negative practices such as child labor, self-medication, drug abuse, and eating unbalanced diets. Learners' self-esteem and empowerment have risen in the bar in political discourse, and respect, of ad, uh, respect for other opinions also adhered to. Mr. Chairman, why it, is a, why it is refreshing to know some of these amazing developments, it is perhaps uncomplimentary to realize that the division is yet to open a single class that will upload digital technology. This, for me, shows how late we are behind the clock, but we will catch up. You're still watching The Pulse with me, Gifty and Dorothea, and it's Friday. We ought to be excited, don't we? Okay, I'm going to take a very quick break, but when I return, we'll tell you about some arrests that have been made in Kaswa, some suspected armed robbers. And you do know if you follow the show that we brought you what we highlighted, the insecurity issues in Kaswa. And so it is quite dramatic that right after that, there have been this massive arrest. We'll tell you more about that right after this break. Please don't go away. <laughs> 